So I'm going to be talking about uh, thermodynamics, uh, rating, and I'm going to try and make it interesting because I notice that some of the people are not thermodynamic people. But there are big implications from this and it's holding back the earth building industry on a big scale. So I'd, I'd just like to explain what this NATHERS is, the National Home Energy Rating System. This is the six star thing. In New South Wales, there's a program called Basics. Um, you must meet this to get a building license. And it has a do-it-yourself component, relatively easy to use. It has guidance so that when you're feeding in the data of your house, it will give you clues as to this window is a bit big, maybe make it smaller to rate better and so forth. The three programs that are law in Western Australia, where I come from, are Burr's Pro, Accurate and First Rate. And these are all quite similar. For those who are not familiar with them, everyone else please bear with me, it's a computer program that simulates how much energy the building will use, will it be energy efficient according to their standards, and is it allowed to be built? So by, by law, well, in the National Construction Code, for houses, you have to have a building that's structurally sound. We've talked about that. It has to be waterproof. Graham North addressed that. It has to reach thermal comfort and a few other minor things, but, but they're the big ones. So I'm talking about thermal comfort. And these um, four researchers, uh, Daniela on the left, um, Chris Beckett, who's now at a university in UK, he had a PhD in rammed earth before he started this project, but on the uh, micro level. Um, Rachel uh, Cardwell Oliver, who is a mathematician, these studies generate masses amounts of uh, numbers which have to be handled. She's from the mathematics department of University of Western Australia. And Professor Christoph Hubner, who made a lot of the little measuring gizmos where you me you built into the rammed earth walls a linear thing so it measured watching the energy going through the wall and going out. Um, he scientifically measured, and uh, the paper that covers this is yet to be published, but it's coming soon, um, was trying to prove, because I said to this research group, uh, Rob Freeland here, who's been making mud bricks all his life, says that uh, a, a, a mud brick has the sun on the outside, here is the inside, the energy goes in and the energy is getting through on a hot day. By the time night comes, the heat hasn't quite made it through the inside and it kind of goes out again. So what happens inside that wall is quite, quite critical. Um, and it's not all that um, well accepted in, in scientific circles of people who make the rules that determine the outcomes that affect our industry on this six star thing. So let me give a simple analogy how this um, NATO system works. If, if, if these chairs represent the continuum of me trying to get a building permit for six stars. So um, I, I start here and I've got to work my way through these steps. So I design my house, I have an architect or a designer, I design it myself, I figure it all out, it's a great house. It's got to be structurally sound, it's got to be waterproof, that's a separate topic. I then go to someone who has got the legal authority to accept it. That generally means they've been trained in one of these NATO's programs, they've bought the licence, they're allowed to use it, they're allowed to issue certificates. They will take my data and they will punch it all in and enter all the, all the data here. So that's the um, first step. So Burr's Pro, Accurate and First Rate, the three legal programs, they differ mainly in their front end, how easy it is to enter, input the data into the program. Once it's in the program, we've got this big calculating engine in the middle of the computer program. Uh, that's called uh, the, the Chinath en engine. That's uh, developed and built by CSIRO. It's undergoing improvement. There's, there's decades of improvement to come. But by and large, it, it does an OK job. It falls flat in a few areas that we don't, don't like. Um, one that I don't like is it does not take any notice of relative humidity, which in earth buildings, you know, we've, we've got a thermal flywheel we've talked about, but there's also a humidity flywheel with equalising um, uh, moisture content. Moisture goes into the walls in a vapour form, it comes out of the walls, it, it has, has a big effect. I mean, a classic was we built lots of rammed earth houses in Broome in Western Australia. Tropical, pretty harsh climate, but it's right on the sea. It's high humidity every night. 
The high humidity would come in from the ocean, permeate the walls. The walls are quite damp. Sometimes there are even moisture on the walls in the morning. Sun comes up, really hot desert climate because it's desert climate on the sea. Sun comes up, says, I'm going to heat up these walls and make the people hot inside. And the water in the walls and on the walls says, oh, no, you don't. I'm water. You have to heat me up. You have to uh, expend what's called the latent heat of vaporisation. So we've got a phase change happening. So the, 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 heat, the sun has to heat up the water, vaporise it before it can start heating up the walls. So these houses were incredibly cool, even though everyone says, oh, a humid um, climate, you know, earth buildings are not going to work anymore. Well, they work beautifully. And I checked with our architect at the time who was born and bred in the Caribbean. He said all their houses there, uh, hot, humid climate again, were made out of coral from the um, beach. That was all there was. And they also were very porous on the outside edge. They also had this thermal effect of a phase change of moisture coming into the wall and keeping, keeping the heat out of the building for quite a while. So anyway, so we've got this computing engine here that's assessing your data that's been in, inputted by the computer program. And then it, it spits out quite detailed calculations of, of um, temperature you know, by the hour for a whole year, and it does, by and large, a, a good job. The, the next speaker will be saying that there's some flaws in here, but let's skip over it. Let's say at the moment it's, it, it's, it's good enough. So we've, we've got all this data here, and, and if you use these programs in non-rating mode, meaning non-legalistic mode, you can get a fair idea of, of how your program's going. And, but then you have the, the problem child over here, which is a comfort criteria where politicians, not scientists, have said, well, all this data, we've got to decide, are you comfortable or are you not? And, and therein lies the problem. And uh, we believe that these comfort criteria are, are set quite wrongly and they discriminate against earth buildings. And they, they certainly do favour lightweight, tightly sealed, well insulated buildings, which is not us. We are into free running, climate responsive, adaptive comfort, and, and we don't fare very well. Now, Australia leads the world in, in some forms of earth building. Western Australia leads the world in rammed earth. You might say, well, why are you complaining? Well, it should be much more. I mean, earth building should be the predominant form of building in Australia. And uh, I can see that if we can make sense of this argument, that could very well happen. I, well, I hope so. <laughs> um, Temperature set points here. So in this comfort zone set by the government, they said, well, for cooling, you can have uh, comfort is this temperature plus or minus 2.5 degrees Celsius. Now, earth buildings don't need, they don't have cooling problems. They're very good at cooling. There are only two ways you can make, uh, in house building, there are only two ways you can make uh, cold. One is by electricity, which is heating, ventilating, air conditioning stuff that we've been hearing about. There's only one other way you can do it. It's thermal mass. And, and you store the cool of the night before and release it the next day. But you have to open your doors and windows, or your windows at night. You have to get the cool breeze flowing through. You have to cool your house down. Then the next day when it's hot as heck outside, well, you close it up a bit. But So if this temperature variation, which is 2.5 degrees Celsius plus or minus the comfort set point on the cooling side, was introduced onto the heating side, earth buildings would flourish. They'd take off because earth buildings, by and large, everyone says they're great in summer, but if there's a problem, it's, it's winter. But there's, there's no leeway in the winter. Now, by, by just changing this leeway and making it equal for heating and cooling, the building fabric of Australia, in my view, would suddenly change that lightweight, well insulated, tightly sealed buildings would still be okay, but people would suddenly see that these thermal mass buildings are much, much better than the other ones because they use electricity. Now, the National Construction Code says one of their aims is 
to reduce greenhouse gases, to reduce the use of electricity. Everyone agrees with that. That's great. But then they say, you've got to get six stars. Yeah, that's great. Everyone agrees with that. But then they say, you've got to get up to here, and then you've got to use all this. Well, that's not great. And it's been said by many that these are political decisions, these comfort criteria, but how you change them. We invited the Natters people to come here, <laughs> but they wouldn't come. <laughs> Right, so I'm going to try and talk about uh, a summary of uh, this paper. I'm going to talk about the lessons learned. I'm going to give uh, the preamble to this particular program. I'm going to talk about a, a paper that uh, <coughs> uh, Terry Williamson prepared before this project started. I'm going to talk about uh, a project at uh, Fitzroy Crossing, which was a preamble to this that didn't get off the ground. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the long history of getting all this going, and then I'm going to talk about the paper itself. If someone could get me a glass of water, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> the, uh, so the paper itself, I'm talking about that last. It, it, it's in your, uh, take or your conference bags. If you want to read it, uh, I, I hope you do. I, I, I'd be surprised if anyone has. But... Uh, I, I want to draw the conclusions at the start because if I get bogged in the presentation, you can read that later, but I think the conclusions are, are pretty important. So I'll, I'll move to the summary of this uh, paper. So heating and cooling of a residential, uh, any residential building consumes about 10% of the world's energy. We heard that cement uses a lot of the world's energy. That's true, and we've talked all about cement. Well, energy uses a heck of a lot of energy too, and earth building's got the, the answer for energy. So one approach to uh, reducing these costs is to exploit the high thermal mass of sustainable building materials such as rammed earth. Now this applies to mud brick, applies to cob. I mean it also applies to concrete, to fired clay brick, to uh, cinder blocks, to all sorts of things. But they don't have the detailed benefits that earth buildings have got which we've heard about from other speakers and which are so important. So. Um, there, there's a lack of scientific uh, information on the thermal performance of uh, high thermal mass buildings in real world set settings. Now you might say that's stupid, we all know they work, but in, in the scientific circles they don't really accept that. And When you go to the government regulators and say, you've got to give us some more leeway, they say, well where's, where's the science? Well this paper, and, and of course the previous speakers and the speakers to come, are presenting that data, but we've got to get it into the castle, which is the fortress of the government. And uh, I, I was, I've been quizzing, how did we get to this stage where the best form of construction is locked out of the castle? We're, we're given such a, a, a mountain of, to climb to get approvals. And it was Pete Greed, who's the chairman for our Wednesday summit, and I hope you'll come along. He was the uh, the, the, the boss man of Ebar for, for many, many years, and he said, uh, well, we had the glass mass insulation uh, outfit, and uh, good, thanks so much. Um, <clears throat> he said, everyone was talking passive solar design a long time ago, we need glass, we need mass, we need insulation, and everyone was going down a good, sensible road. And then um, the uh, insulation lobby came along and uh, grabbed the government's ear. And they're a powerful lobby, believe me. I mean, uh, Sue Rove said these temperature points, these set points that I was going on about before, they're subject to government lobby. Well, we're not lobbying. We need to become a, a, a lobby group. But the glass mass insulation came along. They could see there's hundreds of millions of dollars profits to be made. And they convinced the government hey, we've got to insulate all the roofs all over Australia. This will be great. Everyone will save lots of energy, won't cost much money. The country will have a more thermally efficient housing stock. And that was true. It was effective, it was cheap, it was good. But sadly, they didn't stop there. They said, well, now we've done that. Look what a success it was. Now we've got to insulate all the walls and we do it like this. And they did it and they took the government's ear. The government still have that ear. The government won't change it. And Peter Greed said, we missed an opportunity. Well, I didn't even see the opportunity come, coming. No one even asked me. 
And, and now, we're, now we're stuck. We're behind the eight ball and this conference is an attempt to move forward to get <clears throat> in, in front of the game. And it, it's quite hard because we're, we're in a backward position, but we shouldn't be. So this research by, by these uh, kind folk uh, investigated to what extent thermal performance uh, in unair conditioned rammed earth structures in rural Australia could be captured by current uh, accreditation uh, software, in other words, these NATHERS program that I was uh, talking about. So two custom designed houses were built in uh, Kalgoorlie, which is a desert area of Western Australia, well inland. One comprised uh, traditional solid uh, cement stabilised rammed earth walls and the other was insulated uh, cement stabilised rammed earth walls and had a two inch poly, uh, sorry, 50 millimetre thick insulated polystyrene core in the middle of the wall. So the two houses were uh, identical, and we've got a floor plan here with a bit of luck. And uh, they were designed by Troppo Architects. They're uh, quite simple. They were designed to the requirements of the uh, people, uh, the, the, the clients who are the uh, 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 West Australian Housing Commission. And they uh, monitored the uh, temperature conditions uh, of, of these for uh, 12 months. Now, the they monitored uh, every room except the bathroom on the two houses and at the weather station out the back and uh, recorded it from the uh, Kalgoorlie uh, airport as well. They got very good data. They measured wet bulb, dry bulb every hour for 12 months. All this data is online. So if you're a thermal researcher and you want this data, it's free, it's there. The paper in your book, in your bag, tells you where you can find it and uh, it, it's kind of open source so that it could be interpreted many ways. Now, they've interpreted it uh, certain ways. Um, and there are, this is a three paper series. The uh, paper at this conference is an extended abstract. abstract. It's quite short. The uh, paper uh, B is, is, is published and uh, that's available uh, online and that is uh, 13 pages long and it's quite detailed and it's quite uh, technical and it's uh, easy to uh, access. I've got a copy if you get stuck. Um, now I, I want to just uh, quickly go to uh, the conclusions. Um, the, uh, the houses uh, performed substantially the same. There was not a big difference between the insulated house and the uninsulated house. Both were perfectly comfortable uh, and in uh, summer when it's 45 degrees uh, Celsius they were still uh, comfortable inside without, oh this is making some uh, rammed earth samples uh, on site. Uh, this is ramming the uh, foam into the uh, formwork at uh, Kalgoorlie. You can see it's a red material there, everything's red in uh, Kalgoorlie. Uh, both the walls are 300 millimetres thick um, and uh, these are the temperature sensors that were um, put in. Um, this, this was designed by uh, Christoph uh, Hubner, and uh, uh, so was this. So this is measuring the temperature was built in from the outside to the inside so you know how the temperature, temperature is going through the wall. Uh, this was just uh, measuring the outside temperature on the face of the wall, the inside temperature on the face of the wall but going up to a monitor that was uh, up in the uh, ceiling. Um, this is the house when it's nearing completion. It was a, a pretty conventional house as uh, rammed earth houses go. Um, that's the uh, finished look. Uh, it wasn't designed as a special house. It's part of their rental stock. Uh, they need lots of houses there. So this is the uh, weather station uh, in the backyard. This is the data collecting stuff. This is the telemetry system in the ceiling where they had to send all this to a central computer. Um, just go to the next one. So they did uh, comfort uh, assessments every month to see what the people think and they were very happy the, the whole, whole year round. Um, they, uh, the star rating was very different in that the, uh, with insulated you got an extra uh, couple of stars but in reality that didn't uh, come, come true. Um, this is what did come true. So on, on the top we've got um, outdoor temperature and if you scale that across the outdoor temperature got to about 46 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, this is the Burrs Pro simulation at the bottom where they have all their climate files. The red line is the climate file assumed by Burrs Pro from 30 years of gathering data and you can see the gathered data is pretty good. You know the red on the top, the red on the bottom more or less match. 
but you can see that uh, Burr's Pro has fallen short a bit here. It says the house will be much hotter in summer than it really is, and I think that's about five degrees Celsius that it's out by, which to, that's, a, that's a big amount, five degrees Celsius error in their computer program saying this is what it should do and this is what it does do and that's what you get your six stars on, what, what they think, not what actually happens. So this is what actually happened, this is real life, this is what was predicted and uh, they're, uh, yeah, they're, they're different. This is another one with, uh, well there's, there's I'll, I'll just go to the conclusions, um, you can read that while I find my notes on the actual com conclusions. So. The, uh, well, let me tell you what the EBAR conclusions are because their, their conclusions were that um, this paper uh, says that the two houses, insulated and uninsulated, they, they, they prove the suitability of rammed earth as a sustainable building material able to curb domestic energy demands. Now, full stop. These are real scientists with a real conclusion. Now, mud brick would be the same, but it... it, it uh, can curb domestic energy demands. I would have thought that's pretty good. That's the whole objective of the National Construction Code, the whole objective of this greenhouse gas reduction. But you can't get approval for a house that scientifically does what it's meant to do. And we've got all this anecdotal evidence, which they never listened to. It's time, I think, for the authorities to wake up. So I think the EBAA conclusions of, of this research are as follows, I think. If the heating thermostat setting used in NATURS was lowered by just one degree Celsius, it would make an incredible difference to the star ratings on Earth homes in colder climates. That's a big deal. The lowering of the heating system setting for naturally conditioned buildings is of course in line with adaptive comfort science for non-conditioned buildings. And EBAR buildings, or earth, all Earth buildings, are naturally conditioned buildings without air conditioning units. Natters has never been interested in adjusting these heating settings for the earth building industry. I believe it's a carryover from the, um, from, from the lobbying days of the insulation industry. In fact, they've never really been lobbied very hard by the Earth Building Association. I mean, this is about as far as we get and everyone goes home and goes back to earning a dollar. Um, but the, uh, the key thing is Earth buildings are failing the star rating in the colder climates and they're failing as a result of winter predictions. And, and in these Kalgoorlie homes, what was found was that the Burrs Pro said, well, it'll, it'll be kind of okay in summer, but in winter the people are going to freeze to death. You know, summer, 45 degrees C, okay, outside. But one degree, see, the people will be really cold and, and the amount of energy needed is, is going to be massive. In reality, the people turned on small bar radiators, didn't use them much, said it was okay and it was no, no big deal. So, so Burr's Pro had that very wrong and, and that's due to the, the temperature. At 7am you're meant to be at a certain temperature and an earth house is quite cool at 7am 7, 7 so the program says we must bore in some energy to get it up to temperature so it needs a lot of energy to heat up an earth building that's cool from the night before at, at, at a quick rate. So that's um, kind of a, a, a problem. So Natters has adjusted the cooling settings of all buildings, conditioned and non-conditioned alike, to reflect the adaptive comfort settings by adjust, adjusting for climate. This is against the science around thermal comfort. Adaptive thermal comfort doesn't apply to conditioned buildings. And, and, and so we're, we're not in the conditioned buildings. We're like Phil Harris was saying, you know, we've got our, in the middle of summer, We've got our doors and windows open at night. We cool the place down at night. We store the cool. The only way you can do it without electricity. And, and then, um, uh, so, so they should be using this uh, PMV settings and they've included a couple of degrees leeway set point for the cooling settings within these NATO's protocols. These politically based decisions are not backed by science and they favor lightweight condition buildings by seriously underestimating cooling loads. Now the CSIRO report on the effectiveness of NATURS points to the excessive and rising cooling loads. Um, I, I need to wrap this up because the, the more important speaker is, um, is to come, but a, a couple of things. 
I, I haven't had time to talk about uh, Fitzroy Crossing, but we had a similar thing happen there where we didn't build a building. Terry Williamson was a, a thermal expert on this project. We were all set to build a design, a, a bit different to the one I showed you, but for Fitzroy Crossing, which is in a hot, humid, tropical zone in northern Western Australia. They did all the thermal responses and, and the earth buildings didn't fare all that well. And I said, well, compare it to what you're building at the moment. Steel frame, lightweight, well insulated. Our house was, the rammed earth house was much, much better. But anyway, they said, we'll build it in a desert where the rammed earth will go well. We built it, the rammed earth went well. We then compared it to another house in Kalgoorlie that was nearby, similar layout, similar orientation, lightweight framing, the standard building form there. This house was occupied and monitored, and in the 12-month monitoring period, after two weeks, it was summer, they said, we can't live in this lightweight house, we have to install air conditioning. And so they went and bought an air conditioner, they installed it, they set the temperature at 24 degrees Celsius, all the monitoring for 12 months was pretty well 24 degrees Celsius. So what does that tell us? I mean, and, and uh, these, these are rental houses where they don't actually install air conditioning, so people would be uh, quite, uh, quite uncomfortable. I'd just like to finish up, I'm, I'm not going to be able to go through some, some more detail, but I'd like to finish up with how did this come about? I went to the university for years and nagged them, we've got to do some work on rammed earth. They did a lot of structural work over years and Daniela came along and we teamed up and she's a structural engineer, we did lots of structural work on rammed earth, but a contractor or anyone can nag a university and, and, and then they're looking for projects. You know, she'd say, oh, I've got some students who might look at this, so you'd write out a topic and, and, and they do it. And then we, she said, well, I need to do some more structural work. So, hey, we've got a thermal problem. The earth building doesn't have buildings falling down, but we've got these thermal problems. So she sort of swung and, and, and moved, to, <clears throat> to, moved to, to this thermal work. And it took years to get going. And she got government grants. And this, this research, these two buildings, over a million dollars to build them, over a million dollars to get there with all the palaver and, and, and building up to it. But now that we've, we've got these results, we need to use them. And, and there are lots of researchers doing lots of things. I'm just saying that's how you people can go to your place of learning because they, they like doing research and they find this earth building interesting and we need scientific research because we need to change the rules. And so don't be in awe about this is very hard or this is impossible. It, it's, it's doable by anyone. So I would encourage you to go out and, <coughs> well, I don't know, spread the word and see if we can uh, make some change because we, uh, we need some change. Thank you.